this is Sonova. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And today we are taking a look at Tabanusi Builders of Ur. This is a game designed by Daniele Tashini and David Spala, published by Board and Dice. It plays from one to four players in about 120 minutes. It does. So this is another tea game in the series of, tea games. of tea games. That was yes. right. It's a tea game in a series of other games. So you have Tabanusu, Teotihuacan, Tekenu, Teotrismagistus. Yes. Sulkin, all of that bling thing no, of heavy Euro style games. Yes. So in this game, you are a builder of Ur, I would guess, yeah, because I... that's the undertitle of the theme. game. There's no theme. You're building buildings on a map. Yes. So this is a game where you use dice, like you do in most of the team games, but this time dice is not, is, or it's a resource. And every time you take a dice, you're basically going to have a being one of the five different districts, you're going to take a die from there and that die is going to have a color and it's going to have a number. When you take a die, that number tells you where you have to move your architect, which is where you're going to do your actions next round. And then, then you're going to take a die and choose where you're going to go next time and next time and next time. So that is kind of like the crux of the game. When you have taken a die, the die is just a color. You can roll it, play with it, whatever you want to do, because that's Perfect. the problem in these kind of games is that you, you sometimes you sit and, and that's fine. do things and you can do that in this Perfect. game. Right. without actually destroying the game. And then every time you have done that, you're going to do two different actions. And depending on which kind of district you are in, there's common districts where you will plan up buildings. You can build buildings, either the ones you have planned or the ones other people have planned. You can continue on other people's plans to like, oh, I'm going to expand this yellow plan over here where you already made a plan. So someone else can come and build it. And you can build the buildings. When somebody builds a building, you basically kind of want other people to build the buildings you have planned because then you are going to get bonuses for doing that. So you're going to go through all the game. You're going to build these buildings up in the district. In the port, you're going to build ships, which basically give you special bonuses. You're going to build houses, which gives you a one-time bonus and also then going to give you points when the, the, the district scores. And you have this cigarette where you're going to basically put out the different uh, claim markers to score and houses to score three different things that's randomly put out at the beginning of the game. And then the game is just going to go around doing your turn, my turn, your turn, your turn, and the other players in the game are going to have a turn as well. Not just the two of us, depending if how many players we are. Nice of you. Yeah, it's kind of better like, though. That's the rules, We're playing I a four-player game, but only we are getting turns. <laughs> and then when you have taken all the dice from one of the different boats in a district, that district is going to score. And after five scorings, the game is going to end. You're going to continue playing the rest of the round. And then all the districts are scoring once more, and then you end the game. Yeah. You're also going to have some uh, final scoring cards in your hand, which tells you where you want to build different houses from your mm. player board. And there's different decree cards on the play or on the on the game board, which is basically you are racing to go for those points. And that is basically what you're going to do in the game. Yeah. So start with looking at the artwork and the components. How does the game look? It looks nice. I think like the game board looks nice. I think the first time we played it, I was a little, um, what do you call it, uh, annoyed with the uh, places that you put your architects mm -hmm. because there's a boat with the uh, with, uh, dice. Uh -huh. There is no clear space for your architect. No. Nope. But uh, after the first play, it didn't bother me anymore. It was it, fine. It's kind of weird. Like there is, yeah. like, why would you not have like a little box or where? It's probably because you can end up having like four of, of pairs there, yeah. but it's kind of it's easy to say where they are, but it's not really a place to, to have them. Yeah, but it, it's fine. But I think like the the board looks nice. Mm -hmm. um, it's other than that, it pre it's pretty clear. The iconography has sometimes gotten us confused. Bit of issues with that, yeah. yeah. Basically, some of them mean seems like if the rule book is correct it seems like the same symbol can mean two different things mm, being yeah. two different spaces which is kind of weird yeah. and one thing which is kind of more of a it's not a big problem but it's thing i i'm i'm wondering is that many games this year or at least if quite a few games or not like 200 games but but some games this year has had this problem i enjoy a board which has space for all the things to be put out but then when you put it out and I sit and I look at the board, mm, there's yeah. a lot of things on the board I don't see anymore. So I'm wondering if that happens because people during COVID played everything on tabletop, to, similar to tabletop to, to Tabletopia, so that you could see things from a uh, pie or you can just move the camera. I can't do yeah, that while playing Having the again. stacks on the board, we had to take them off and oh, put yeah. them to the side because they were blocking our view. Absolutely. And also, there is no player aid. What do you think about that? I think, like, I'm, and we, you have heard me talk about this so many times now and I'm going to continue doing it in every single video. Until they listen to us. Why? 
Yeah, like why? Why? There is no reason why there is no player rank. As I've said, I said it's like in a couple of videos very recently. Even though the game is super simple, why not just give me a player rank to show me the things? And this game is not super simple. There's many things that would have been easier to understand if you had a player rank. It's very con very contrast between this and um, Tawantin Suyu, yeah, which had this like. A4 mm -hmm. sheet with all the details. And, and why go and from that double, to yeah. nothing? Yeah. Like there's no reason not to include a player aid. And the other thing, there's no reason to not use the back of the box, the back of the rule book, to have a reference for how the rules work, a reference for how the scoring works when you score the districts, and uh, symbols. I understand that you can't have all because there's diff very yeah, many yeah, different course. things you need symbols for in this game. Like but just like a simple play rate, if you don't gonna give us play rates for the game, at least give us this. And this also, is not about this game, this is about all games. Yeah. There's no reason why every single rulebook in existence would not have a reference for everything at the back. We need to do a rambling topic about we this. We need to do this because if it's I don't if I don't want the player aids, I can just like put them back in the yes. box. I can even throw them away if I hate Burn them so them much. If I don't want them. I want them. Please include them in every game. Yes, thank you. And 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 like we don't talk about that in every video because but but here it was a problem when yeah. we played with new players and they needed the player aid to understand and remember things. Yes. Let's talk about the rule book. Pretty clear. I talked about this already so I'm done with that. The rest of the rule book is fine. It's Sometimes kind of hard to find things because you have like some very important rules that are then highlighted in some boxes So you had to try to find that box. Oh, I know I read that somewhere. Oh, I need to find uh, where is it? Oh, it's one of those boxes which is then and, and, and the rule book is fine. It's not horrible It's not amazing and it Something has that between. kind of it has that thing This is more of me problem again where it just explains everything of the game before going into the game some Which people I, like that. I know, I but I, I hate it. Uh, but but yeah, the rule book is, is fine, nothing horrible, nothing amazing. Playtime and player count. We played this with two players and with four players. Yes, four players two of them were us when we were yes, four. Yes, that was, yeah. We were in the game. We were in the game. Uh, four players took the longest time. Yes. And uh, two players took like 1.5-ish mm -hmm, hours mm -hmm. and four players took between two and three hours. That is true and actually the first time we played was like two and the second was three so oh. depending a bit on... on, on um, so I think you can get it down to around two hours with two, four players actually and the game says about two hours so I mm. don't think actually... Oh it's not a lie which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> because most boxes are just... It's putting some time on there. And so yeah, I think two hours is manageable. Yeah. Because when you understand the game, and I'm going to talk more about this later, because the game is very convoluted and hard and strange to get your head around, but when you do, it's not that hard to, to, to get yeah. it done. Yeah, like so we, the actions in itself yes. are not very hard to understand, uh -huh. and but it's just like why, Everything else, yes. why you're doing stuff. We're going to talk more about this, but basically like to, to end up the, the, I think two players fine, more player is way better. I think it's fine at two players, mm -hmm. but I would rather play with three and four. Yes. But I think it's fine with two players as well. Yeah, but I wouldn't choose to play this game with two players. Like uh, if I yeah. if I knew about the game, like if I knew all the things that the game is trying to do, which I think is trying to do, uh, and I saw the reviews, and I would then pick something that is better for two players to buy. Yeah. So I would not recommend, like for me personally, to I would then if you don't have the Kenu or, or especially like the Kenu is also better with more, but Teotihuacan and Tawin Su, those are better with two players, I think, than this is. Mm. So let's talk about the gameplay and we're gonna talk more about all of these strange wonky things. Yes. It's very very interactive. In a weird way. In a very weird way. And that is what is so hard to wrap your brain mm. brain around. And this is what we didn't get the first, first time. time we yes. played it. It was so because weird. Because we are like these uh, solid, multiple solitary mm -hmm. uh, Care Bear um, Euro People. players that only like sit in our own box and do stuff and don't interact with people. We do like a lot of interactive we games do. and we're playing more and more we interactive do. games, but this is interactive in a very different way. So this was very, very, it felt very different mm -hmm. to me and, and like at the end of the game I was just like, oh, okay, so this is what the game would want us to do because yes. in this game you're basically setting up possibilities for other people to do stuff. Yeah. And you're waiting for other people to set up possibilities so you can do stuff. So basically like basically. very shortly explain. 
most of that is when you build a building. So yeah. when I plan a building, let's say I do, I put two yellow planning tiles beside each other and I have my marker on them. If you then go ahead, let's say the third player comes and plays another one because three is the maximum size. So they place another yellow one. So now you have a three sized yellow project. And then you go and build that project. It's going to be super cheap for you to build. But if I want to build it, I'm going to have to pay like the normal cost for building and an extra for each of my own markers. And if you build my building or the building I have planned, I get bonuses. But if I build the one with my markers on it, I don't get any bonuses. I own the building now, but I don't get any of the bonuses. And the bonuses are moving on the tracks. And to get points for the houses that you just built, you need to have moved on the track. So if I build a lot of houses and a lot of buildings by myself, I'm not gonna move on the tracks, which means that those houses are gonna be worth zero points. Not a single and point. And the other way around, if you're just setting up for other players, uh -huh. you're gonna move a lot of on tracks, but and you don't, don't have any have buildings any... yourself. And if there's a park nearby, uh -huh. adjacent to the building that some other player has, they get to go up on tracks as well. If you have it yourself, then it makes your building bigger, but you don't get a bonus. So it's like this... It also makes it better when it somebody sounds... else owns it. Like, yeah. so it's basically about setting up good things that are good for other people than yourself. It's a very weird sim symbiosis uh -huh. kind of because mm -hmm. I, I want to give you something yes. so that I can get something later, kind of. Yeah, and you want to give me something so and hopefully then somebody else is going to give you the same something yeah. so that you then will be able to do both of the things mm. uh, and it's kind of interesting like especially i felt with both two of the things. especially i felt with two players yeah is that i as and oh, i mean more players but i thought more about it with two players mm. is that i set up something and i'm thinking okay i would rather that you build this building mm. but if you don't in like four five six actions maybe i have to go over there and just do it myself yeah. because i will get points for it but it will be better for that you build it so i move on the tracks yeah. so it's kind of like that I'm kind of feel like I'm building something and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put out kind of like a, a positive trap. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. putting this out there and like, oh, do you want to go into that? Do you want to go and build it? Oh, please go and build my building, build my thing. And then if you don't, I'm going to be like, oh, I have to okay. do it myself. To do it myself. Yeah. And, and that it's weird. It's so weird because because sometimes you need to do it yourself mm -hmm. because to achieve certain things and yes. get points you have sometimes because you have to you do it yourself uh, if you want a brown building somewhere specific and nobody plans for a brown building uh -huh. you're gonna have to plan for that brown building and build it yourself you and and that was the the thing that we did the first time mm -hmm. that we set up a bunch of plans that we had no interest in ourselves yes so, and nobody else so that means that they're bad for everyone else too yeah. and that that is like bad so you I the sweet spot is to build something that is good for both so mm -hmm. so both scenarios can net you something and also i think that it's, it's kind of the, the dynamic of that is going to change throughout the game yeah because if i set up a lot of things and move for example on the yellow track a lot in the beginning yeah. I might get a lot of building my own yellow things later in game because I already get points for it. Yeah, that's true. But in the beginning, if I, oh, I'm going to build a lot of these yellow buildings, they're worth nothing. Yeah. Like the last time when we played two players now, I in the end I had the yellow up to three points per square in the yellow. Yeah. So it was very good for me to just go out and build a yellow building for myself adjacent to two gardens or parks. And I would then get nine points for that. Mm -hmm. So it kind of changes up throughout the game how good it is and how much I want to give you yeah. opportunities because oh you're moving high on that and I don't really want to give you opportunities to move even higher on mm. that so it's very weird and very interesting it and feels I, very wonky and I think I like it uh, so there, there, that There's is like think. one of the <laughs> huge think. things the other big like mechanism in the game which is different and unique is the a dice drafting part. Oh yeah, I think that is very interesting. Like uh, both uh, that I need to go somewhere specific to interact with that area. Yeah. But that the resource that I get can be used in that area. Mm -hmm. And the number you take determines where you go next. So you kind of always have to be like, okay, so um, now it's three dice left there and mm -hmm. you're going there. So now it's scoring soon. What can I do to, to score, get in some points before the scoring is? Do I want to spend a goal to, to go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very bad for me to go there. And you have some jokers also you can choose a little bit from. So um, I think I really like that mm -hmm. uh, mechanism. I agree. And also the resources are very tight. Yeah, like, so tight. Uh, you can use gold, for example, to ignore the die and go everywhere. But gold is also a wild resource. So you need those to get like your engine and get things going. Yes. Getting gold is very, very good because you 
usually you just get one die on your turn. There's different things to do, like planning, putting in projects to get some bonus resources yeah. and stuff like that. But most of the time you're going to get like one resource. Yes. So those are the two kind of big things in the game. Yeah. Other than that, it feels kind of like another Tekenu Teotihuacan. You were like, yeah. Mm. You have... You have, for example, when you have ships with special abilities and you build houses that scores for them, it kind of feels like the pillars, I think, they are in Tekken, yeah. where you place mm -hmm. the pillars and you want to... It's basically the exact same scoring thing. It's kind of different because special abilities are a different play, place, but mm. it feels very similar to that. And not that that's a problem, like it's it's totally fine to it's do something and, and add it to something else, but yeah. kind of had like, okay, you just took the same thing and put it in there. Yes. So those two things are the things that set the game apart. And I would say that that is more than enough to set a game apart oh, yeah. because we play a lot of games that are very similar and I feel like I have not played a game where you have to be interacting in the way that you do in this game. I agree. And I think also the tracks are interesting here yes. because the tracks don't give you points in themselves, mm -hmm. some points, but most of the points you get if you have buildings in the corresponding color. Yes. And so, so moving on tracks is hard. You, we have played few games where you've gone very, very high on yes. the tracks, but also like getting actual points from the tracks are, mm -hmm. are tricky as well. Because, yeah, as you said, if you have, like, no buildings, a lot of track, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, Absolutely. Points. Yeah, I, the points. One thing I really enjoy is the timing, basically, because oh, yeah. you, you kind of can see when a, a area is getting close to scoring. Yeah. So if you have something planned there, something you want to do there, you, you must kind of try to sneak in there and get that before the scoring uh, triggers. Uh, and that is kind of neat. Like you, and basically in the beginning, you will think like, oh, five areas, that's not too much. And then you start playing and say, oh, it's going to be a while. And then suddenly you're just like, one boom, building boom, scores, boom, one boom. score, one score, one score. And so the game, like, I, I can see, like, back to, like, playtime, I can see it being pretty false. Mm. Because when you get your head around these things, even though there's a lot of, like, choice AP here, because there's so many things to choose from, uh, like the planning of going here, 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 and then because I want to do that, and I can put out on that boat, which gives me the ability, so I can later do that. There's just so many things to think about that I really enjoy. Yeah, I agree. And also because it's so interactive. If you mm -hmm. uh, suddenly have some plants in a build yeah. area that I desperately need, I will then have to be like, oh, but I wanted to do this. Now I have to calculate it a little and, and see if I want to go there instead, if I can. That is so, true. So um, should we talk a bit about variability or yeah. is there anything you want to add for the gameplay segment? No, I think variability is... Yes, some variability then some final thoughts yes. coming up. Variability, I think, is pretty high. Like you have the different decrease, which is a race. I enjoy that that's also timing trying to squeeze so that that's the thing i always enjoy in games mm. like i'm it's hard going for something and trying to do it faster than you so i can get those points and bonuses yep you also set up different colors from different things i don't think that matters too much but it does change up the a game little a, a little bit so one action the like, different action spaces that yes are, i like that too. that's going to change up yeah. so there are and especially abilities for the for the boats and then you have of course and the, the interactions are also different yes so there are many ways like if you play this game and you love it you can probably play it many 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 times without it being similar yeah so let's do some final thoughts are you mm, ready i'm just okay uh, you have something to add yeah i have do something it. the 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 um, final scoring card that you have yourself yes with where you build the buildings mm -hmm. because everybody gets uh, like if i have three in this district and yeah. two in this i get 10 points it's so Friggin' difficult. Like I haven't done it once. I have. In, you just have to plan it. Okay, yeah. But that's the that's the thing. You you kind of th that's the balance. Like, yeah. what do I want to do myself, and uh -huh. what do I want others to do, so that I can. And if people don't do what you want them to do, then you have to do all the work yourself. It's hard. But it's not that. It's it's, it's not. All, it's, okay, only, it's not impossible. And it's only three different areas. So like the the possibility of and not... the harbor also oh that is true but that's kind of easy those you will have to build yourself there's no one yeah. else can do that for you that's right there's only three other things so like let's say you need two things or three things in one area yeah it's probably someone's going to build some projects there might not be three things you can build it but maybe like yeah. two and then you had to build the last one yourself or if you have to have two two and two it's going to be i'm just saying it's hard 
Oh yeah, but it's not yeah. like it's it's not like it's gonna be. Oh, I'm not gonna get the it because you didn't do it because it's gone. A lot of things gonna happen. There's one the bonus game. that also can give you two. Uh, extra. Yeah, that's sweet. I don't like that. Yeah. Like oh, I got that. I got ten points, but you're probably not gonna Ooh. be able to do two of them. That's gonna be super hard. Yeah, that will be hard. So final thoughts. Final. Are thoughts. you ready now? Yes. You want to begin? Ready now. Yeah, I think I like this yes <laughs> because it's uh, it, it, I, I like a lot of the things mm -hmm, in this game mm -hmm. but it's th that one just very weird thing with the interaction between players that mm -hmm. just like bugs me a little bit maybe because I don't get it yeah kind of um, so I, I, I find it hard to love it mm -hmm. because I'm sitting there just like, am I doing something wrong? Yes. Am I not getting this? And I kind of don't like this in games where you have to play it in a certain way to be fun. Um, you have to be like a symbiosis of all the players or mm -hmm. have to get it for yeah. me to have a fun time. I've talked about this in some other games as well. Mm -hmm. For example, Why Can't so the Whistle Kingdom has this weird thing that you have to like play in a certain way for it to be fun for me okay uh, i don't know if i feel the same way about this game mm -hmm. but it, it's a little thought that bugs me that yeah. prevents me from loving it um i think like from all of the t games this is not my favorite one mm -hmm. it's it's very different i think it does some really cool things i want to like it more mm -hmm. but this is like um Interaction wise, I think like this hasn't gotten me in love with interaction. Yep. For example, with the way that Wildcatters did when yep. we when we loved it, oh, yeah. and I was just like, with this, it has this little like aftertaste in my mouth that isn't like super duper. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just repeating the same yes. things now but i i think it's a good game mm -hmm. seven but i don't think it's any more than that though maybe in the future if i in get it in the future i will so yeah this is a tea game and just like a, bit, a little bit of looking into the future we are planning to play all the rest of the tea games um for keeper call, for keeper call in the yeah. beginning of the year and then do like a ranking video of all the tea games so if yes. you're interested in that let us know in the comments and we will get that done as soon as possible um yes i I like this game. I, I, I enjoy that. I don't feel that, as you say, I don't even you said you weren't sure either, mm. like about the you have to play correctly because that I feel like you, 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 you will play it when you will play some projects and then you can't, if you are going to go up, play projects and then build all your buildings, you're going to have to do those two actions every time you land somewhere and you're not going to do that. So it's kind of not to disagree with you, but I feel, I yeah, feel we like had, there's... We had one player lost last night who, okay. who nobody was planning in one area and mm -hmm. she wanted to build there and oh, yeah. she had she had to do all of the work herself and that was very punishing because the yeah. game doesn't reward that as much that is true but then maybe you i don't know like i wasn't in that person's head but then you maybe have to that's many games where you have to come yeah. to a point where you have to say oh i have to do something else yeah, now. Yeah, of course. i can't go into doing doing that and forcing something to happen yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I enjoy it i think the interaction is very interesting i think it's very different i think it's wonky and weird i think yes. it's and i don't like it's not that it's it's it just it just feels weird and, and different in ways i'm not used to yeah so it might be that the game kind of makes me uncomfortable yeah. in that it's like yeah. i don't understand how to play this well and that is fun, like it because it challenges I, I, my view of yeah, board of, games. Of, of interaction <laughs> in board games. I think that the interaction here is very neat and interesting. I think the base of the game, like the, the, the it's very smooth. The going, and I love the fact where you move the die, you take the die, and you move to that space. And like, oh, I don't want to go any of those spaces. And suddenly you're stuck in a space, like in in the third place uh, or in the third um, area with number three, and all of us have a number three. So you. Basically, have to be there for all of, all of eternity, or you have to spend one of your precious golds to be able to break out of that three cycle. And I think that there is many great things here. I think that if you play it a while, a couple of times, it's going to go very smoothly. I enjoy. Yes, I do enjoy it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I think I like the game. I, it's not one of those I love the most from the T series, like spoiler alert for that video we're going to do. Ooh. Yeah. But it is. It's fresh and it's different and it's I want to keep it for that. Yeah. I want to keep it because I want to 
experience it again and see if there's something I'm missing. And I yeah. don't feel like there's something I'm missing. I just feel like I have to understand how to play the yeah. game well. So I'm going to give it a 7.5. Yeah. I think if for now it might drop, it might go higher. Uh, but I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I think it's a, a good game. I, I think there is, of course, I would really like the play rates. I would like all of that. Please make play rates. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a very good, fine game. Interesting and different. Yes. And that's it. If that's you are it. still here and you have not subscribed, you can do so now by clicking the subscribe button. And if you are still here and you like what we do and you have subscribed and you want to do something more, you can also support us on patreon.com slash board gaming ramblings. And that's the end of the video. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Sinua. And you've been watching board gaming ramblings and bye bye.